Greetings to all my students. I hope that you are doing well. Now, before we proceed to video lesson, I would like to point out a few things. Firstly, I came to know that most of you are not actually reading the textbook, NCRT book or any other reference book. It's understood that you didn't get time to purchase it due to the lockdown. But things are quite smooth now. So you can get books within a few days or can download the books with the PDF link. You can find the PDF link, can download the link, see the video lessons, sit with it and then only write down your assignments. Don't complete your assignments without reading the textbook. Secondly, for note copies, you must have three single line soft cover note copies for physics, chemistry and biology respectively. Now coming back to the lesson, you can see here a picture showing some consumable items, milk, salt, sugar, lemon juice. In this lesson, a new lesson in chemistry, lesson two, we will study about these matter around us with a particular question, is matter around us pure? According to a scientist, something is pure, it means that all the constituent particles of that substance are the same in their chemical nature. A pure substance consists of a single type of particles. Classifying matter which include classifying the things. One way of classification of matter we have already discussed in lesson one based on the physical properties as solids, liquids and gases with two more states of matter, plasma and BEC. The other way of classifying the matter is by its composition, that is chemical properties of matter. Ultimately, on the basis of chemical properties of matter, all matter can be classified as mixtures, elements and compounds. Pure substances, a homogeneous material which contains particles, atoms or molecules of only one kind and has a definite set of properties, melting point, boiling point, and which cannot be separated into other kinds of matter by any physical process is a pure substance. Examples include elements, metals and non-metals, and compounds, salts. A few examples of pure substances are tin, sugar, salt, sulfur, water, protein crystals, diamond, baking soda, copper sulfate crystals. Common properties of a pure substance follows its definite composition. Pure substances possess a distinct chemical structure, fixed melting or boiling point. Pure substances have a constant melting or boiling point. Like for example, for water, the melting point is zero degrees Celsius temperature or 273 Kelvin temperature 
and boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius temperature or 373 Kelvin temperature. Compounds and elements. There are two types of pure substances. First, compounds. A pure substance made up of two or more elements that are chemically combined in chemical reactions. They can be broken down into elements again by chemical reactions. Second, element. A pure substance made up of one type of particle that cannot be broken down into simpler parts by chemical means. We today will start with the study of elements. Can elements be broken down by chemical changes? Can compounds be? There are no chemical processes that can break down an element into simpler substances. Though, compounds can be broken down by chemical changes. Elements, a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical reaction, identified by one or two letter symbol, arranged in a periodic table, located on periodic table, indicating its chemical property and can be a metal, non-metal or a metalloid. We can have many elements and their representation is known as symbol. The ancient representation of symbol was given by English chemist, physicist John Dalton, who used symbols to represent the atoms of then known different elements. He used them singly. It included circles, like for example for oxygen, containing distinct symbols, like for example for sulfur, circle with the sign, positive sign here, or circles containing letters, like for example silver, a circle within which the S letter is mentioned. A few years later, the system was superseded with the chemical symbols and formally given by J.J. Berzelius. He came with three conventions to write the chemical symbols. First, the first letter of the name of the element denotes its symbol. Like for example, for carbon, the first letter is C, hence its symbol is C. Example, boron. As the first letter is B, hence the symbol of boron is B. Hydrogen. The first alphabet or letter is H, hence the symbol of hydrogen is H. For iodine, I. For oxygen O, nitrogen N, sulfur S, uranium U, etc. The second convention is to take up the first letter and second or any other letter of its name. Like for example, for aluminium, the symbol is EL, which actually is its first letter and second letter respectively. Argon, AR. Barium, BA. Bromine, BR. Calcium, CA. Chlorine, CL. It represents the first letter and the third letter of the name of the element. Cobalt, CO. Magnesium, MG. Neon, NE. Zinc, Zn, silicon, Si. The third convention is to take up either the first letter or first letter and any other letter of the Latin name of the elements. 
such as for copper, the Latin name is cuprum. Hence, its symbol is Cu. The Latin name of silver is Argentum. Hence, its symbol is Ag. The Latin name of potassium is Calium. Its symbol is K. The Latin name of lead is Plumbum. Hence, its symbol is Pb and so on. Classification of elements. On the basis of physical chemical properties, there are three groups of elements. First, metals. Second, non-metals with the opposite properties of metals and metalloids. Iron, silver, gold are common metals shown in the picture. Carbon, sulfur, red, phosphorus are the non-metals. Metalloids are the elements that exhibit some properties of metals and some of non-metals. That is intermediate between metals and non-metals. The picture we can see the three examples as silicon, germanium, arsenic. What metals are? A metal is a material that is typically hard, opaque, shiny and has good electrical and thermal conductivity. In chemistry, a metal is an element that readily forms positive ions and has metallic bonds. Examples are aluminium, copper, iron, tin, gold, lead, silver and titanium. What non-metals are? Non-metals are not able to conduct electricity or heat very well. As opposed to metals, non-metallic elements are very brittle and cannot be rolled into wires or pounced into sheets. They form most of the matter in the Earth's crust, the oceans, the atmosphere, and even living things. This tabular representation shows the comparative study of properties of metals and non-metals. With the property appearance, metals are shiny, non-metals dull. The physical state at room temperature, metals are mostly solid with exception mercury. Non-metals about half are solids, half are gases, and one bromine is a liquid. With reference to property density, metals have high density of non-metals low. Then with the reference of strength, metals are strong, non-metals weak. Malleable or brittle. Metals are able to be spread as sheath when hammered and they are therefore showing malleability. Non-metals break or shatter when hammered, hence are brittle. The next property, conduction of heat and electricity. Metals are good conductor of heat as well as electricity. On the other hand, non-metals are poor conductor of heat and electricity. They are insulators except graphite. Magnetic, magnetic material, iron, Cobalt and nickel behaves as magnetic material, whereas of non-metals, none of the elements are such. Sound when hit. They make a ringing sound, so are sonorous. Non-metals are non-sonorous. Some of the metals with the notable features and uses we can go through as sodium can easily be cut with the help of a knife, floats and burns on water. Used as orange street lamps, magnesium strip and powder catch fire easily and used as camera flash bulbs. Aluminium has a low density which makes it lightweight, does not corrode in air 
and therefore are used in aircraft and making of power cables. Potassium can be cut with the help of knife, explode with water, and are is used as dyes, inks, fertilizers, and weedicides, weed killers. Calcium, some effort is needed to cut it with the help of a knife. Very reactive and present in many compounds. The uses include in the making of cement, concrete, cosmetic, toothpaste, insecticides, paints, cheese, etc. Iron, a hard substance can be shaped to make a wide variety of strong and hard objects, can decompose into rust and used as to make industrial purposes or activities. Combined with carbon to be used as teeth and the car bodies. Copper, a red orange metal which is soft enough to put easily into wires and spread as sheet, good conductor of heat and electricity used in making electrical circuits, lightning conductor, hot water cylinders, copper bottom pans. Zinc, a brittle blue white metal which does not corrode in air, used to prevent rusting by the process galvanization. Silver, a white shiny metal that is soft enough to be made into complicated shape by pulling them as wires and pressing into sheets and used in making jewelry, coins, ornaments. Mercury, a shiny silver liquid used in thermometer, fluorescent lamps, tooth filling, etc. Some of the uses of non-metals include their compound forms or with the help of their elementary form in various ways, such as hydrogen, a colorless, odorless gas with a notable feature can be burned in air, but a certain air hydrogen mix explodes. Used in making products from oil and also as fuel. Helium. A colorless, odorless gas, less dense than air, does not burn in air, used in party balloons and airships. Carbon. Two main forms of carbon, diamond and graphite, with hard transparent crystal and a gray, shiny, slippery, solid conducting electricity acids. Notable features used in various ways. Diamond, jewelry, and saws, drills, and certain types of scalpel. Graphite used with clay to make pencil lids, lubricants, and electric motors, etc. Nitrogen. Again, a colorless, odorless gas does not allow things to burn, slows down chemical reactions which cause decay, used in the storage of food to provide a low temperature for storage of blood, aircraft, tires. Oxygen, again a colorless, odorless gas, supports burning and is needed for respiration. Life support systems in hospital includes oxygen cylinders and also used for welding and cutting metals. Sulfur, yellow brittle solid, does not dissolve in water, burns in air to produce sulfur dioxide gas. Its use is in rubber harder substances to use as tires, as fungicides to protect crops. Bromine, a red brown liquid which is slightly transparent, produces red brown toxic fumes with an unpleasant smell soluble in water, present in seawater from which it is extracted. It's used as dyes, disinfectant, flame retardants. These physical properties show variation in 
properties of metals as well as of non-metals and their uses. Chemical properties of metals and non-metals. Each element has chemical properties. A chemical property reveals itself when a chemical reaction takes place. When this happens, the metal changes in some way and form compound. For example, the sodium and chlorine were present as elements, as metal and non-metal, but after the chemical reaction, they form the compound sodium chloride. Two properties which are investigated by carrying out chemical reactions are how metals and non-metals react together and how they react with oxygen. So today we have studied about matter, which further has been divided as pure substances as well as impure substances around us on the basis of chemical composition. As matter has exactly the same composition everywhere are pure substances. Every sample of a given pure substance has same properties because a substance has fixed uniform composition. We also discussed about the elements which include the substances that cannot be broken down into further substances. Having fixed composition as it contains only one type of atom, there are altogether 118 known elements and they are organized and arranged into the periodic table of elements. When these elements combine, they form the compounds, again with distinct composition, hence are the pure substances. A compound always contains two or more elements joined in fixed ratio and proportion. In our next class, we will study about the compounds, the formation of compounds, the ways by which compounds are formed, and naming representation of a few compounds. <laughs>